Brothers and sisters in Christ, I have a unique study Bible which you may not have heard of. It is the King James Version Sword Study Bible. This particular one is in the easy read format. It is published by Whitaker House, and I am so thrilled to be able to show it to you today because there is so much contained in it. We're actually going to take a look at the back of the box here. Now, I truly do want you to take a moment and first make sure that if you're on your desktop, you click your cog down here at the bottom right and make sure you click the quality settings and make sure that it is at the highest setting. Or if you're on the YouTube app, click up here in the top right hand three dots. Make sure that your quality settings is at its highest possible. Once you've done that, make sure you pause the video and read this. Now, there is just so much that this Bible has, and I'm actually going to show you this as well. So the King James Version of the Bible, just as it was in the 1611, is here. Some of the words that they have updated, Whitaker House, is here. And I will actually show you in just a minute a list of all of the words that they have updated. And in addition to some of the words that they've done, this unique study Bible, if you purchase a Bible from Whitaker House... They will donate a Bible in kind to someone in need around the world. So you're participating in evangelism and outreach ministry when you purchase a Bible from Whitaker House. So all of that alone is amazing testimony of Whitaker House. Now, this is the personal size. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the measurements. So just follow with me here. 8.3 inches long, 6.3 inches wide, 1.9 inches in depth. The giant print edition, this is the personal size large print, the giant print edition, follow with me now, 10.1 inches long, 8.4 inches long or wide, excuse me, 2.2 inches in depth. So they're about the same depth, just about, just another two quarters of an inch on the giant, but they're both indexed. They both have art gilding on the pages and they both have the exact same contents. They're both genuine leather. They're both in this particular edition, burgundy, because I've seen other reviewers, they have black. I wanted to show you what the burgundy looks like. I really like it. It's not too uh, bright or dark. If you remember my other review of the NSRV, uh, with the Apocrypha, this is in a burgundy. Look at how much of a difference that is in, in color between burgundies. So you see a burgundy here, a burgundy there. What exactly is going on there? And they both have this kind of square, uh, compact feeling to them, which is amazing because this is a, a large print, uh, an 11 point, right? And this is also a 15 point. It's even a, a larger print than that NSRV is. So... For the purposes of the video, because these both contain the exact same material, I'm going to show you this one. Now, there are other videos of this Bible and exactly what all it contains in terms of the guide and how to use it. But what they don't show you in some of those other videos, which I'm going to show you in this video, is some of the word changes. Like, for example, just take you a second and look at this list. This is just one page, of course, of some of the King James Version 1611 English that has been changed. So, standeth has been changed to stands, right? And that makes sense. Here's one, here's one thing that I want to get across to you. I know a lot of people who love the King James. I know a lot of people who uh, almost worship the King James. But when you're a, you know, born in 1990, if you will, you've grown up on a very modern English, you don't want to be reading and have the reading experience broken up. So just having simple words that have been changed helps a lot. You're, you're faithful to the 1611 English, but you just have a few words. Instead of standeth, you have stands. So that's an amazing, uh, one of the only few Bibles, if the only one that I know of, that does that, just making those simple changes. There's also certain things like definitions of biblical words, that aren't really used anymore. Okay, so so when you are in your daily vocabulary, you're not really using 
uh, a myrtle. Uh, you're not really using, you see what I'm saying? And he goes on different kinds of words, silver cord. Are you using silver cord in your daily? N no, you're not. But this explains it to you so you know what it is. And there's several pages of that. Now, when you're going through, this is one of the biggest things that this Bible offers. Whitaker House has been a blessing to the Bible community. I'm not sure why the Bible community as a whole, Crossway, Thomas Nelson, anybody and everybody, Bible publishers, have not done this before. In the Old Testament, I'm going to show you. Now, of course, you know God is speaking in Genesis. You know God speaking in Leviticus. Of course, you know that, right? And here's the words of God in red in Leviticus. You could almost do that yourself without having it in red because you know that God is speaking in Leviticus if you've read your Bible, if you've been a Christian for a long. Now, what you probably don't know, and this is what I'm going to show to you, is did you know that God was speaking in Psalm 81? But but specifically, specifically, did you know that God was speaking in only chapter, uh, excuse me, verse 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 in Psalm 81. I don't, I, I don't, I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't say that I knew that, but I do now. And there are all kinds of Psalm that God is speaking in for just particular parts where it, it is David and then it's God. And having that is in almost invaluable to me. I'm going to be honest with you personally. Seeing it in Psalm 51, excuse me, Psalm 50, is a perfect example of that. Everybody has read Psalm 51. I know a lot of people who have Psalm 51 memorized. I know some people who have parts of it tattooed, right? But Psalm 50 comes right before that. And not only does it come right before that, which gives a lot of context to Psalm 51, but in Psalm 50, God is speaking for most of it. And this is a brilliant uh, addition to the Bible community that Whitaker House has put out, having the words of God in red. But not only that, of course, as you can see, having certain words underlined. So I will not reprove, reprove, rebuke. See there in the rebuke in the little block. And of course, there's a whole guide system. There's other videos that can show you exactly how to use this extensive study system that they have all throughout the Bible. I'm going to show you very briefly about it, but for a real detailed view, you can find other videos on it. So take, for example, um, if you wanted to find out more about the Great White Throne. Okay, so you want to find out more about the Great White Throne of Judgment. Well, what you would do is, is you would go to P21, which in, for this instance, it would be in the New Testament. So in the New Testament, you go to page 21. So when we go to the New Testament, the page count starts over. You go to 21 in the New Testament, and then in the either side margin or in the gutter, there will be P21, right? And then you go to the next page number, because it'll have there the next page number, and all you continue to follow it through all the way to Revelation 20, and everything about the Great White Throne of Judgment will be there. There's also a chapter and in book introductions. So Matthew, Matthew has a outline. Matthew has a chronology event and, of course, just the actual verse breakdown. So, you know, like when you're doing uh, different studies of the book, book of Matthew, you can have exactly what is going on in the book of Matthew laid out there right before you. Now, getting into, of course, not only are the words of Jesus in red, but the words of God himself are in red. So like in Revelation, there's words of God in red. Um, again, why every single Bible doesn't already have this is beyond me. Every single Bible produced from here on out should have this. And the Old Testament and the New, words of God in red, or words of God bolded, however you want to do it, Bible publishers, I'm talking to you. You need to do this in every single Bible you produce from now on. I understand that there might be some extra ink cost, but it is just incumbent upon you to help people understand who it is that is talking here and the context, because it helps learn more and more about the God and what God of this Bible is saying. I love it. I can't endorse it enough. But moving on, there's more. Don't believe me. There's more. So 
as some of the other reviewers have shown you, there's about 300 pages or so of uh, different articles, extra biblical articles. I'm actually going to show you some of them. Now, just hang with me here. Just hang tight because this information is not anywhere else. I've Googled it and you can't really find what exactly is contained in this uh, post-revelation commentary. Okay, now, of course, there's a 289-page concordance. You heard me right, 289-page concordance. And there's a lot of detailed maps. That's been shown on videos. What hasn't been shown on videos is what exactly is in this particular block of commentary post-revelation. I'm going to show you some of it. I just couldn't show you all of it. But how to interpret the Bible. Different articles like that. Uh, there's also going to be several articles in here related to creation, evolution, science, dinosaurs, um, you know, Noah's flood, astronomy, the the search for the fossils, how exactly that relates, the heavens and recent creation, as you have heard probably from the scientists, uh, the, the universe is still expanding, still creating, how exactly does that relate to us as Christians? Then like I was saying, evolution, uh, how long is a billion years? Different articles like this are, are really, really helpful. There's one in here with a Ken Ham about, you know, creation and the, you know, not the uh, old earth, but the young earth creation stance uh, from Genesis. And then we get into some different charts. And now this is where this Bible really begins to shine. Um, I'm actually going to zoom in just a little bit. There we go. So different parts like this Jewish calendar. Have you ever watched a TBN or any of the uh, Daystar people, uh, uh, televangelists? They are always talking about different parts of the Jewish calendar and their significance whenever it comes up in relation to our uh, basically Roman calendar that we use now, January through December. Well, here is the Jewish calendar as it is and how it relates to us Something like that is, is brilliant because otherwise you'd have to Google it. And then there's different ones that, that are, you would come up with in a Google search. So having that right there that you can flip to is very valuable. Biblical science and what we believe. Deep, deep uh, article here. Uh, almost an, an essay, if you will. Now check this out. Chronology of the Bible. I want you, just as a fellow brother or sister in Christ, to, to read this article on the chronology of the Bible. Because understanding the order of events in which they happened is, is going to help you add context to your Bible reading, to your Christian walk. And articles like that are amazingly helpful. I've benefited from it personally, and I know you will as well. Different other chronological graphs and charts and then different things about the papyrus that you know the bible was originally written on in the days of paul and then check this out god's plan and how it is that the people he called and where they were called so adam abram when it was just when he was just abram when he was called but then when he became righteous which verses which verses in genesis does Abram become Abraham and when he was called in righteous, all things like that. Now, check this out. The other day, somebody asked me, so, so let's say you're doing a hospital visit. Or let's say that you're just visiting an elderly person. And they would like to have you read them. Maybe they're bad of eyesight. They want you to read them a Bible story. Okay? And they say, can you read me the story of the crossing of the Red Sea? You know, you're you're visiting with them and maybe you don't know exactly where the crossing of the Red Sea is off the top of your head. You can just flip to the back of this. You maybe have this bookmarked in your Bible. And like I said, remember, the personal size has the exact same content. OK, personal size, exact same content. as this. So this is in there. I'm just showing you the giant print for right now. But so you have the crossing of the Red Sea, Exodus chapter 14 and all those Bible stories. Uh, that we all know and love, but maybe maybe we've just forgotten off the top of our head in the heat of the moment where exactly it is. You can flip back to it. You don't have to pull your phone out and Google it. It's right there. And the amount of time it would take you to pull your phone out and Google it, you could have done flip to it in your Bible here. So great for hospital chaplains, prison chaplains, that sort of a thing. 
uh, home visits, great. Also, favorite readings, Ten Commandments, uh, The Last Judgment, different things like that that we've all heard throughout our many years in church. Here they are all laid out. These kind of lists I have never seen in any of the study Bibles. I've been reviewing Bibles for three years now. I own probably, I don't know, 30 Bibles. I, most of them are study Bibles. I've never seen any of these charts like this laid out. And this is amazing. These side-by-side -side readings. Of course, readings for life experiences. Like I was just talking about, when you're going to uh, visit somebody, you're, you're doing some counseling. Um, you, people have questions about you know, budget and life and different things like that. Different Bible verses correspond with it. The genealogy of the Bible. As you know, um, Matthew does an extensive job of laying that out. Here is a graph laying it all out for you to read. There's that Ken Ham article I was talking about. Where did the races come from? Uh, you know, this is being recorded July 4th, 2020. And race is a major, major issue in our American country right now. Great context added to it. So, and then there's all kinds of different articles. Uh, the Promised Land. Biblical symbolism. Again, you want to talk about uh, people on TV, TV preachers. They are always running on and on about uh, what the Alpha and Omega, what the beast, okay, and, and you know, the lamb, the leopard, all of that, right? You hear it all the time on TV. What exactly does it really mean? And here's the verse that it corresponds with. So on and so it goes. Miracles and miraculous events of the Old Testament. People ask, I've had them ask me, Caleb, what is the Holy Spirit's mission in the Old Testament? To help provide miracles and things like that? To, to provide unique, special abilities and times in the Old Testament? Here's some of that laid out for you in great detail. Life and teachings of Jesus, uh, of Jesus Christ. So, what Jesus taught... Here is this, look at this, this is so amazing. I have never seen this in any other study Bible that I'm aware of. So you want to know exactly what Jesus said on adultery. Matthew 5, 32, there it is. You want to know exactly what Jesus said on baptism. There it is. It, so on and so it goes. It's an amazing list that I'm not sure why isn't included in every Bible, really. Uh, forget about study Bible. Things like that should be in every single Bible. And on it goes. So the miracles of Jesus, now that's in other study Bibles. But the parables of our Lord, that's not always in other study Bibles. And again, like I was taking a test recently for school. And in the seminary class that I was taking, it asked about the parables of our Lord. So something like that, you know, I could have used before to study for the test. And names and titles of Jesus Christ. So again, Going with those TV preachers, they're always talking about the names of Christ and this, and it means that, it means this, it means that. Well, check this out. Here is a full list of the names and titles of Jesus Christ, exactly what they mean in the Bible verse corresponding. So, amazing, amazing resources here, and, and we're still going. I know, just hang in there with me, but we've got more to go. All kinds of different articles like this. Mountains in the Bible. Messianic prophecies of the Old Testament, and then their corresponding fulfillment in the New Testament. That's an amazing, amazing piece of, of study that has been compiled for you, and you don't have to Google it, and you don't have to trust that the, the Google search is going to give you the right one. There it is, right there, by PhDs and everything, for your edification. Events of the Bible, you know, the rainbow, okay, you know, the LGBTQ, they've taken over the rainbow, the rainbow occurs in Genesis 9, 13. So you can flip to it, show people different things like that, right? I mean, all of these main events, if you will, that all of us are aware of. We're all aware of these events because we've been in church for so long, but maybe you've forgotten exactly what chapter and verse it appears in. That list has you covered for different events like that. What makes grace amazing? What makes the cross foolish? Different articles like that. Uh, just a great spiritual blessing. Uh, the gospel plan of salvation. So again, you're, you're witnessing to people. Maybe you're doing some street ministry. Maybe you're doing just uh, a youth group. And you know you've got some young people that, that are, aren't entirely saved. 
you could quickly lay out the gospel plan for salvation just like that. So here it is, the legendary. And I used to say this about other concordances, but here it is, the absolutely astonishing, mind-blowing, 289-page concordance. I've never seen anything like it. I promise you this is the most extensive concordance of all time ever. Uh, second only, I suppose, to Strong's Concordance of the Bible, which yeah, it's not really a fair comparison. We start at page 609, and we get all the way, watch this now, we get all the way to 800. In 98, 898. It's crazy. 289 page concordance. If, if, if what you're looking for isn't in that concordance, I don't know what to tell you. Now, check this other thing out. You know, you've seen me put the maps up for you many times in all of the videos, right? I always show the maps because I'm a, I love the maps. I like to context again, adding context. Where exactly was Joseph in all of this, right? So on and so forth. Have you ever seen another study Bible do this? I haven't. So it has not only just one track of like a biblical character, but it's got multiple tracks of biblical characters. And then it's got detailed descriptions as to what all is going on to add additional context. I love it. And there's several maps that do this. All of it is bound in a genuine leather that, while I will say is bound in Korea, presentation page, and, and the Bible is bound in Korea. Now, you've probably never seen that before. I hadn't either. It's all usually in China. But this Bible, produced by Whitaker House in New Kensington, Pennsylvania, is quite possibly the greatest study Bible I've ever seen. Now, there's commentary. Believe me, you can get all kinds of commentary. And you can buy the volumes of the commentary separate. So study Bibles with commentary are valuable. Believe me, I've reviewed a bunch of them on this channel. But to be honest with you, the practicality of carrying a study Bible, a full, you know, the, you, you saw my Reformation study Bible, it's what, five inches thick, right? The practicality of carrying that anywhere is just a little unreasonable. Let's just be honest. But carrying something like this, this is very practical Bible, right? This is the size, um, I mean, my hand is actually a little bit bigger. So this is the size of a hand. You could easily carry this anywhere you go. And it contains all of that that I just showed you. It's an 11-point font. This particular one is 11-point font. Um, again, this is one of the greatest study Bibles ever. I, honestly, I'm not entirely sure why other Bible publishers have not done what I just showed you in all the Bibles that we produce, the words of God in red in the Old Testament. An amazing study Bible. The Whitaker House produced sword study Bible in King James Version with the updated English so that anybody can read it, anybody can enjoy it. This particular one, 11 point font, underlines difficult terms. I mean, there's just everything that you could possibly want or need in a study Bible. The cross-reference system to end all cross-reference systems. And they're both in genuine leather, which is, it's a it's a beautiful genuine leather. Yeah, I love it. Even though it is a paste-down liner, you can get these on, uh, in fact, you can get a giant print version. You can get a giant print version, listen to me now, for $15 on Amazon. Giant print Bible. Not this particular genuine leather one, but you can get one uh, with the same paper for fifteen dollars. You can also get you can also get a personal for fifteen dollars on Amazon, and other websites would carry it as well. I love the the gold foiling on the front cover here. There's absolutely nothing about this Bible that I do not like. I love every single thing about this Bible. I love the the, the commentary at the end. I love the maps, and I honestly. In three years of reviewing Bibles, cannot endorse a particular Bible any more than the King James Version Easy Read Study Bible, the Sword Study Bible, by Whitaker House. And I promise you, this will be for your benefit for many years to come. I'm Caleb Bass, and I promise you that your life will be for the better if you get. 
this Bible.